Hello, Amanda. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator. How are you today? It's Halloween, and there's snow on the ground. <laughs> oh, poor little kids tonight. I don't have to take any trick-or-treating anymore. Anyway, um, we're going to talk to your cousin Brian. And I like to give my little spiel before I start. Oh, when they get close, my head starts itching. Here we go. Now my nose is itching. Ah, good grief. They make, their energy makes me itch for some reason. I need to maybe tell them not to do that. <laughs> it's not their fault. Anyway, I see here, feel, sense, no. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. And I try to describe the picture to you to the best that I can. And um, they never waste a message. There's always a reason. So if you don't remember it now, you'll, if you don't understand it now, you remember it later, you'll see it later. Or another family member or somebody will validate it for you later. They'll understand. Sometimes they kind of stretch your little fingers out to touch other people and let them know. Um, it's kind of their way of doing it lately. It's not an exact science. And uh, I can ask them all the questions I want to. It doesn't mean they're going to answer. So some of the things, I might have to stretch outside the box a little bit. Well, they just tell me enough. They tell, they tell us what you need to know, maybe not what you want to know. So, but there, there's always a reason for whatever they say. They don't waste their energy. All right, so let's. He had already asked me. I'll just start out with this. Oh, goodness, I don't know why he's making my nose itch. It wasn't itching. <laughs> I feel like I have creepy crawlers. Okay. He had asked me to pull a card before I started. And it was it was about what he, he thought the card would explain it better. What was in him that he needed to let go of that he absolutely could not let go of? And what what his real true struggle was while he was here. And the card is surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Then you can own your power and soar in your life. So, and I'd already gotten this feeling from him anyway. He could not let go of, he couldn't let go of his outdated beliefs. He couldn't let go of some things from, from when he was younger. I'm not going to say his childhood, like his childhood was screwed up. But when he was younger... And, okay, he said these things just ate on him, but he kept them inside. He didn't want to bother anybody. He didn't want to make anybody feel bad. He didn't want anybody else to feel guilty. It, it's, it's like he's showing me that his mind just kept going back to when he was younger. So something... Or somebody, no, he says not somebody. He said it was himself. He said he's not blaming it on anybody. It's not anybody's fault. He said it's, it's his fault that he could not overcome his lack of confidence. And it came from when he was younger. And it's not that any one person did it to him. So I don't want to put guilt on somebody. It's not that any one person did it to him because it was up to him. And him alone, nobody could do it for him, for him to overcome, what's the word you want to use? He says for him to overcome his outdated beliefs about himself. He's giving me a thumbs up. He likes the card. He said it's perfect. So he's making a big point of this. And like I said, we're not putting guilt or blame on anybody. That all lies on him. It's all up to us to overcome things like that. It doesn't matter what anybody says about it. It matters what we believe about ourselves. 
He said, okay, his regret is he regrets leaving mom. He regrets leaving mom. He regrets doing this to her. He's going like this. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have. How yeah, could I do this to her? And so he's actually getting down on the ground and he's kind of beating his fists on the ground and he's saying, it was dumb, it was dumb, it was dumb. And actually, sorry, sorry, I'm probably gonna itch the whole time because I usually don't start out itching. Actually, we don't feel that horrible, that bad. Like he's he's just showing how much he regrets it, how sorry he is for it. It's we don't feel that bad once we get up there because they cleanse us, they clean us, they strip away all like like peeling an onion. They strip the layers of the crap that we put on ourselves down here, and that gets stripped away from us when we get up there, and it's all white and bright. And at least that's all they've shown me. That he wants he so it's not I don't know why he's wanting me to explain this. It's um it's not that he's suffering or really well now he's jumping up and going, Hey, he says, I am not super sad. I am not. That is not what happens when you get there. He says, Grandpa is here. Let's see if he's going to show who, what Grandpa looks like, which one. Um, so, even if he still has Grandpa's here, it could be a great grandfather, or it could be even a neighbor who felt like a grandfather to him. It's somebody who feels like a grandfather to him. Okay. He says he has been coming to you in your dreams because he's trying to reach out and let everybody know he's okay and that he made it. He's trying to bring some peace to everybody. And evidently you're a little more susceptible, susceptible to your <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Evidently, he can get to you easier. <laughs> okay, let's see what he's showing me. He was going to show me, because you're going to know that he's there, and it was going to be a smell, and then he's showing me outside, standing under a tree. I don't know what the smell is going to be though. The outdoors, um, flowers, no. Just, he's, he's showing me like, he's showing me a tree, he's showing me the colored leaves on the ground, he's showing me, but there's a smell associated with that. So I don't know if it's like the old wet leaves, I'm, I'm not sure. That's a little different. Okay, he's showing me that he's going to come along, and I don't know what you look like. I haven't been on your Facebook. I don't do that ahead of time. It messes up my little bitty mind. But he's going to come along and like take one or two little bitty hairs and pull. So every so often, every once in a while, you're going to feel a little pew. 
and that's him trying to get your attention and let you know that he's there. So when you get any of these signs, and you love him, tell him you know that that's him, and to bring you more, and so validating, acknowledging him. So that way he knows he's getting through to you, other than you're just going to go, ow, that kind of hurt. Let him know that you know it's him. He says, I am happy now. Other than what I did to everybody when I left. He says there's things that he did right before he left that he regrets doing. He shouldn't have done them. It was his pain. That should have been all his. That he shouldn't have. Uh, he shouldn't have tried to leave any of that to anybody else. Makes sense. Okay, I'm not sure what he's showing me yet. It's not quite clear. So whenever anything like that happens during a reading, it's for you guys. It's uh, It just happens that way. So I hopefully you could hear the little song I have set up for my son calling. So he was a, uh, they reach out, they reach out that way too. Anyway, let's see what else he's going to say. He just, uh, he just, okay, he just, he just keeps saying, I regret what, I regret the things that I did before I left. I regret them. I regret them. But I am happy. Okay, we've already said that. Um. It's, I don't think I've ever seen this before. It's almost like he's confused about whether he should come through, whether he should show up in people's houses, whether he should um, be showing people signs. Whether it's a thing to do. So what you all need to do is tell him you want signs from him. Give him permission to ask. You need to ask to show that he's around. He's, he just kind of like walk. He's, he's, he's showing me like he's walking around inside of a house and he's just like not doing anything. Usually when they do that, they go, okay, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this or I'm going to make this noise or I'm going to make this smell or I'm going to do this or that. And he's not doing that. He's just kind of kind of walking through and then just stopping and standing there like like he's got a question mark above his head like should I or shouldn't I so you all need to tell him if you want signs from him or you want to hear from him ask him tell him it's okay give him permission he's talking about hair again hair Says your hair smells good. Did you just wash your hair when you when you watch this? Did you just wash your hair or just spray something on it or something something to your hair? Now he's laughing hysterically. You don't want to have hair like mine. And he laughs again. And he is good-hearted, and he feels good. Okay, he drew my eyes down to my keyboard. 
and I was staring at the number lock key and I said, okay, you know, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? Number lock key. So there's going to be numbers that are going to pop up for you guys that are going to be assigned. They will be, I don't know what, well, he's showing me 777, so you can look up angel number 777, but there's going to be numbers that pop up specifically that will relate to him. So it could be his date of birth, year of birth, uh, death, date, um, what else? Phone number. He says like the last digits of his phone number. So these these kind of numbers will consistently start popping up. You'll see them on license plates and uh, even sometimes if you look at the back of a semi, there's numbers on there. I see, I have my eyes drawn to all kinds of things like that, bumper stickers, all kinds of things where these numbers pop up. So it'll, it'll repeat enough that it'll finally get your attention. And this is for everybody. And that, and that's different. I ask them for different signs other than the, the coins and the feathers and the red birds and stuff. Going back outside under a tree. And the tree. The tree is turning orange. So it's fall. But I don't know why he's going to this tree. That's sound like my tree in my yard. Okay, now he's showing me a large white dog got a lot of hair on it. It looks like a like a great Pyrenees type dog, so it may not be the exact dog. You might have to He's acknowledging this dog. Somebody has a dog similar at least to this. And there I said there's always a reason. He wants to thank you for being his friend. He says we were forced <laughs> because your cousin. We were forced to be together, but we still had a friendship. And he wants to thank you for that. He says you did not judge him for some of the dumb stuff he did. Did you two climb up in a tree one time? He's back to another. It's a different tree. This one isn't. This one isn't changing colors. And he's showing two kids climbing up in a large tree. And I asked them to not, um, not go go back to when you were too young that you can't remember, but you're big enough to climb up in a tree. So this would be a memory for him. He's trying to validate that it's him. And somebody coming out, coming out the kitchen door, and they probably didn't literally do this, but he's showing two kids climbing up in this tree, and then it looks like a grandma coming out the door with a fresh baked pie, homemade pie, in her hands like this. So this may not be the exact scene, but he's showing a memory. So it would probably be at grandma's house, I'm guessing. Or a family dinner when grandma would have been there baking a pie. And not you, but somebody else is going to get the smell of this pie. And uh, can't tell absolutely 100% if it's apple. I don't that it probably is because it's a lighter color. Um, the fruit that he's showing me in it is a lighter color. It's a, it's a pie with a crust on it. So anyway, not sure which one of you, but somebody's going to start getting the smell or has gotten the smell of this pie. Just And that'll be in the store, in the car, in your house. doesn't matter where it is when you get these smells. Acknowledge him. He's, he's almost like holding back on his signs, though. It's I've never seen him hesitate. 
Like he feels like he shouldn't. He said when he left, there was an there was an older man who stepped forward in a suit. Now even if and he looks, he would be like a grandfather type figure. So even if grandfather didn't wear a suit, he, at least he dressed nicer. So this this grandfather dressed nicer, and he stepped forward to um, help him go where he needed to go. He says help take him home. And he felt safe. And he knew he was protected because whoever this man is, he's, he's um, I don't want to say authoritative. He's authority, but he's definitely not a weak person. I'm not sure which word to use. Very, st not real strong, just you know you're okay when you're with him as far as protected. There's some kids around him. There's kids around him. Um, I don't feel like they're related. They don't, they don't feel a relationship with these little kids running around. They could be. If they are, and, and they're big enough to run around, they're, but they're small. And there's how many? Three? I could have swore I saw more than that when it first, they first came in. There's at least three. They're young. These could be distant enough relatives that I don't feel the relationship. So there might be a relationship with them, but I just don't feel the relationship. That he's enjoying playing with them. He says they make him happy. Okay, he, he says something about he wished he had presented presented himself different. Not sure what he means by this. Now, hopefully you'll understand, presented himself different. And then, and then he's showing like, like he wished he'd put a different face on. I don't, almost, it's almost like his face just flipped and changed to a different face. Um, so it was while he was here. I don't know where he's going with this. I'm not sure he understands yet. I'm not sure. I know I've been told, and I haven't seen it because I've done readings for people who passed away a day or two before, but I've been told, though, that I said, okay, because I believe in past lives that we come here more than once. So if we've been up there, we've been down here, we've been up there, we've been down here, or whatever. That when we get back up there, we ought to automatically know what the heck is going on. But he doesn't seem to be in. And I've been told that that's not, that's not necessarily true, that you don't automatically know how to move objects down here and leave signs and talk to people and stuff. I think he still uh, has quite figured it out, should we say. If you ever watch a movie Ghost, where um, he's in the subway thingy or whatever with the other spirit, and Patrick Swayze's trying to learn to kick the can and flip the bottle cap. It's kind of like that. They kind of kind of got to learn it. Gotta, they got to learn how to move that stuff, how to do that stuff. And I, that's what I feel like he's doing right now. He's in the learning stage. I think he's a little unsure how to do stuff, but he'll learn. He'll get it. They all do. He wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you to feel like there's something you could have done. He 
He says he, he wants you to be careful who you let into your life. Who you allow too close to your energy. Be careful that they don't get into your head. He says you're an easy target because you're soft-hearted. He doesn't want to see you taken advantage of. I don't know if he's talking about somebody that's already there or somebody that might be coming in or just people in general. He's, he's not specifying. Please tell everybody I love them. And I'm sorry. I just wanted to be <clears throat> I just wanted to be kind kind to everybody. And now he's jumping. He's jumping up. He's been really kind of soft and mellow and laid back and I'm kind of unsure about maybe maybe he's unsure about talking to me and then relaying the messages maybe he's just unsure about the mediumship part of it it's it's not that he uh, it's not that he feels bad or now he's jumping up and he's and he's dancing around he says this is how I actually feel this is how I feel I get rid of all that crap I think he's I think he's just unsure about this process. It's kind of like he's holding back and he's questioning. Um, what are we doing here? What am I supposed to do? I think it just takes some of them, some of us a little longer to get the hang of it. He says, he says, Oh, I'm gonna let you know I'm around. There's something that's going to be in your dream that hasn't happened yet, that he's going to come to you in a dream, and there's something very important that you need to remember, something very important that you need to, I don't know, if relay, or you need to remember it so you can tell somebody, or if it's going to be for yourself. I don't know for sure. He said there's going to be something very, an important message coming through to you in your dream from him and he's going to have somebody else with him and he's showing he's showing a grandma type figure so watch for the dream that has him and a grandma type figure in it And you might want to put a piece of paper and a pen by your bed. If they come through in a dream like that, you're probably not going to forget it. But you know how when you wake up 30 seconds later, your dream starts to fade away really quick? And a true, true visitation is, I had one, I think I've only had one. And it was like seven years ago. And I still remember every word, every sound. The room is clear as a bell. That's a true visitation when it doesn't escape from you. That's when they've actually been with you. He's, and he's thanking you again. And there's something that you did after he left that he's really strongly thanking you for. Something you must have done for the family or something. He really, really wants to thank you for he said it was special. It was special to someone. And it was special to him. He says, please tell everyone I am healthy. I am happy. I am good. I'm not sad anymore. 
I'm actually pretty intelligent now. <laughs> He said, I'm, I'm sending all the love that I can. I hope you all feel it. I'm learning. He says, this gig is not so bad after all. But I'm sorry. And with that, he's going to leave. He says he would like to come back and talk again some other time. That's coming from him. I am not trying to get you to buy another reading or anything like that. I promise you. He, he says I tell you to please be careful who you go to if you want to talk to him. Please don't think I'm advertising myself. I'm just going to relay what he says. And and I always tell people that too. Please be careful who you go to. You can go to anybody you want to. doesn't have to be me. Just please be careful who you go to. He's waving. He's leaving. And he's taking this big white dog with him. And it, it, it looks like a Great Pyrenees or that type of dog with a long, white, thick, thick hair. Okay, much love to you, my dear. Thank you for allowing me to be his voice, even though he wasn't real talkative. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator. Much love to you.